Good morning. It is Thursday morning and I have decided to go on a hike. The weather here where I am now is sunny and a bit cloudy which is very nice. It's not going to be as sunny up where I'm going uh, but it isn't going to rain and the temperatures don't look horrific and I just want to grab an opportunity I'm not going on a, like a really long hike today it's going to be a circular route quite close to where I'll be parked so I'm going to give that a go I can't remember the last time I went on a hike was it a month ago I've been back about two weeks I was away for two weeks it's probably somewhere in the region of a month. I am trying to keep my fitness up. Hopefully by the time you see this, I would have started putting up videos about the, the walking pad, the treadmill that I bought, uh, which is going really well. So that's great. Um, I'm not leaving as early as normal today, partly because, you know, the last time I was hiking it was summer. Now it's autumn and it's not quite so good. I am really, really struggling to wake up in the mornings. I have never, ever been a morning person, so not worth chastising me about it's just the way I am when I used to go out to work and I was commuting into London from wherever I was living and I'd have to get up at six and my commutes were quite long to where I worked in London and when I first started working in London I was living at home with my parents and I would get a coach that would pick up near the end of my road and take me all the way into London and I'd kind of crawl out of bed in a zombie state, get ready for work, go to work, I would sleep on the bus, on the coach all the way there because I was still so exhausted and and then literally I'd wake up just as the coach was pulling into the coach station and I would get off the bus in the same zombie state and then crawl into work and then try and have a normal day and it was awful constantly going from being asleep and tired to suddenly having to be awake and do things it was just horrific and um, that carried on for years now that I self-manage my own work routines because I'm self-employed I don't have to worry about any of that so it's not very often that I set an alarm I tend to just wake up when I wake up and my natural waking up time in the summer can be anywhere between half six and half seven now that it's colder and the daylight hours are drawing in I am finding that I am naturally waking up maybe around 8 and not getting up until maybe 8.30. I do wake up sometimes four or five times during the night to go to the toilet. That's a, that's a woman's thing, I think. And I'm going through a phase of waking up more at the moment. And I have three sets of neighbours who all go to work between 6.37 and 7.30. And for the most part, um, I will be woken up by them because the car park is right outside my bedroom window. It's just the way it is. So I never like go to bed and I sleep all the way through. I'm always like waking up throughout the night. But even so I would say I wouldn't struggle with sleep. I don't struggle to get off to sleep. Anyway, I'm rambling now. So today's hike I am going to a place called Pull Hill, which is quite near one of my other walks, 
which was Stanage. Uh, there was a, a car park called Stanage that I went to and I walked from there. Now when I did that, I, it turns out I mispronounced that because it's written Standage and I was calling it Standage. And then I recently heard Robbie coming on his canal boat diaries and he pronounces things correctly. And apparently it's Stanage. And it's going to be quite an interesting walk. It's not going to be, I don't think it's going to be a particularly long walk. It's a circular walk. I'm going to Pull Hill Quarry, which is a disused quarry. And there are some interesting buildings. I think there are some built ruins of buildings that are connected to the quarry. But Stanage is. I believe it's the longest canal tunnel in the UK and it runs under the hills there and I can't remember the details I will add details as I go so they put in these ventilation shafts that go from the canal up and out the top and you can see these ventilation shafts these chimneys and we're going to walk past one or two of those. I don't know what they look like, I don't know how big they are, I don't know how impressive they are, I don't know how close I can get to them, but, uh, but that'll be interesting. So, it's sunny at the moment, quite fresh, but that's fine. We expect that in mid-October. Um, I don't think it's going to be sunny where I'm going, it's going to be cloudy, but no chance of rain. That's the important thing, really. So let's uh, let's get on our way and let's see what kind of a day we have.
looks pretty cold and windy out there. Let's uh, stick my head out the window. Doesn't actually feel that bad. Okay, so this morning I couldn't even face the thought of breakfast in my semi-comatose state so I brought breakfast with me um, which I'm going to have now it's 
so I'm parked up here right at the edge of the quarry. The quarry is just up the hill there. It's, I can see some of the, um, the chimneys from the Stanage Canal Tunnel. And I, you probably couldn't see it on the camera, but just as we got close, you could see them and you could see the steam, the, the, the gases coming out of them, which are from the canal boats going through. I brought a loading muesli with me today. I have bought snacks for later, but I'm going to be walking quite a circuitous route, so I don't think... I might take something with me, actually. Just, why not? But I'm going to have my massive breakfast. Packed a bit too much here. Anyway, why not? If it lasts. I'm running really late today. It's, uh... It's half past nine and I've only just got here. The traffic was dreadful. Most of the time when I've been doing my hikes this year, it's been during the school holidays, so the traffic's been better, and now it's just awful. I brought a coat to wear, but... It's easy for me to start out feeling cold. And then five minutes into my hike, I'm so hot I have to take layers off. I've got a hat, I've got a scarf, I've got gloves. I don't know I'm going to need anything more than the hat to be honest with you. I'll give you a very quick history of Pool Hill. I was having a look a couple of nights ago and we have the quarry here, which is disused, but historically this is also a Bronze Age burial site. I don't know where exactly, but the pieces that they found, the burial urns and all that sort of thing, are in, I think it's Salford Museum. I will add information there. My dad has very kindly lent me his travel binoculars. Look how tiny these are. So I now have some binoculars to take with me. Which I will do. These are pretty good. They're so nice and light, which is a great thing. It's so cool to be able to see all that distance. So I'm going to take these with me. We'll have some fun with that. What's nice is that the bag has a, a little belt hook there. So I, I've brought my um, my little my little belt. So I'm going to put it on there. Right. Let's try and get organised, shall we? I think I'm going to need this. My hat. Uh, what else do I need? I'm going to need those. I think I'm going to take my scarf. I need to get my boots on. car off the road. I decided against taking my coat. I didn't actually feel that bad. So I'm walking up the hill.
really wet up here. We had horrendous rain at home last night. You could hear it roaring outside, it was so loud. Look at the colours of those hills. There I am there. And if we look up the hill, there's one of the chimneys for Stanage Canal Tunnel. So, because I'm walking roughly a circular area and there are lots of landmarks around me, I'm kind of sandwiched between roads and things. I don't know I'm going to need my map particularly. I'm probably just going to let myself wander. And I want to do a circular pull hill and then end up hopefully getting to the top of the hill to look at the view. Let's see how we get on. I don't know if you can see that from here, but you can see the steam or the smoke or whatever it is coming out the tunnel chimney there. Oh gosh, there's one right here as well. Let's go and have a look at this one. I'm not sure when these were put in, but I'll find you some information as always. They look quite old actually. windy up on the hill here. I don't know those bricks are that old actually. It's an impressive looking thing. It's quite tall. You've got no chance of looking inside, that's for sure. But here's something else I saw. Oh, look, it used to have a door. Probably a service shaft when they were first built. They probably do it from the other end now. So yeah, this is something else that I saw on Google Maps with satellite view, is this remains of this building, which presumably something to do with the quarry. I doubt it's an abandoned, it's not an abandoned house, it looks like Maybe it was something to do with water. Let's have a look. Stick to the outside. It's a sign here, but I don't know if it's going to tell me anything. No, just says danger keep out. That's interesting. My first relic of a building. There is one tunnel there, and another one in the distance there. I don't know which direction to go around the hill. I might go up that way. 
really know where the paths are here, so I'm just going to follow the existing paths. That's probably a better way to do it. If you can't see him on here, I wouldn't have thought. There's a man and a dog climbing around the rocks. I am not going to be climbing around any rocks because <laughs> I know my limitations. I just want to do the walk. So let's follow this path up past the second chimney. Very boggy up here. Even on a hill, the drainage is hit and miss. This weather actually doesn't seem to be too bad. Yeah, we'll follow this path, which I think will take us around the hill. You can see all the remains of the quarry here. It's a little... It looks pretty murky, but... Uh, possibly a good place to shelter if the rain really kicked in and you were stuck. Never knock shelter. colours on that hill are fabulous. Got the remains of the heather there. And there's more, I think that's more quarry works in the distance there. Can you see the steam rising out of that chimney? I hope you can. And then that's about the direction that I came in. So let's carry on. Although I'm not planning on any actual winter hikes as such, not like coming up here, I might, I'm thinking about getting myself a proper short jacket. I have my waterproof poncho, but I don't have a jacket, like a zip up jacket. I'm more likely to wear a hoodie with another jumper over the top. So I might think about that. There's another chimney. We're good on heights. What is it, 20 feet high, something like that? No chance of going in there or even looking in. is spectacular. Let's take a picture of that. Looks like there's a lot of tree planting going on here. And I see this a lot. They look like they're trying to put trees in. I think we're already feeling quite warm now. I get very warm very fast when I start to move about. That's one of the reasons I got the little at home treadmill. Is that in winter, when it's cold at home, and I daren't put the heating on because Energy companies like to rip us off for every penny they can get. A 15 minute brisk walk on my treadmill will warm me up. 
difficult when you're working from home and your job is very sedentary is keeping up your temperature and certainly what I've learned is that sitting still even if you are wrapped up in blankets is the worst thing you can do when you're cold and this is why so many of our elderly folk are going to be in trouble is because they can't get up and move about as much and they will sit there with a blanket on and still be cold. running down here today. It's so wet. There's a path up there you can take. I'm going to keep going. See if I can do this circular walk. Looks like you can probably walk along the bottom there, but it doesn't look terribly accessible. So I think this probably is the way to go. And although it's circular, it's still going up. It's not like a proper hill and you walk around the base of it, like a castle. Wow, Look at that water running. So, here I am, sort of, on a summit, but that's the true summit up there. The view from up here is amazing. Even today when there's quite a lot of cloud, but it's above the hill line, so you get to see everything. Really buffeted by the wind. Right, now we can follow this all the way round. <laughs> it's definitely going to get windier because I'm right at the precipice here. Please, I brought my hat. Looking almost like a proper hiker today. out here, I have to say. I feel like I picked the right day. I 
I'd love to get one of those special phone uh, selfie sticks that has the the balancing thing on it so that when you're walking it's a smoother it's a smoother ride for you and I see lots of youtubers who do a lot of walking using them and they look fantastic but boy are they expensive and maybe if I I don't know, do I need to? I mean, it would be nicer to have smoother walks, wouldn't it? I'm doing my best. But I think the cheapest one I saw that looked like it wouldn't break after a couple of walks was about £125. And I didn't look into the technology whether or not, you know, how it works with phones and all sorts of things so I didn't go into it too deeply because I just felt it was too expensive couldn't really justify it most months I'm lucky if I make that on YouTube and it's not really a business concern at the moment because my channel isn't just about walking so a wall here up into the sunrise fabulous and that's where we've come from and it's the top of Pull Hill and the quarry in the distance this looks like a uh, National Trust sign let's walk around here there's a, a walk through here and down I think I'm going to stay at the top. Yeah, Marsden Moor. Here we go. Here we are, Marsden Moor, Pull Hill. Right, let's carry on. Very wet here. Let's go here. Slippery. Look at these gorgeous autumn colours. The grass is starting to turn. It's just lovely autumn hues. really seen anything up here and it's really windy so I don't know we're going to get an awful lot of bird life to spot. It's always the day I bring the binoculars. <laughs> uh, never mind. This is a fabulous little walk though. I do you like this? This is the one thing a walking pad treadmill can't replace is this glorious outdoorsiness that comes with hiking but I would not want to be up here in a rainstorm I bet on a really clear frosty morning this is quite spectacular but it's going to require some getting up early and I'm not sure I'm in the mood for that. <laughs> Bit of building up there. I think, yeah, that's another chimney for the Stanage Canal Tunnel, but it's square. see the, the steam and the smoke coming out of it. I wonder how many boats actually go through that tunnel. I can't 
imagine it's a huge number certainly not for the amount of spoke that's coming out the top but who knows look at this look at that big chunk of trees and heather down there surrounded by moorland on the left and then agricultural grazing fields on the right the stark colour changes oh this is glorious look at this this is like actually being on a moor Somewhere below me, in the ground, is a canal tunnel with boats going up and down it. It is a managed tunnel because I think it's only one boat wide. I'm trying to remember back to Canal Boat Diaries because Robbie went through it and I think it's one boat wide and it's manned at either end with gates to make sure that uh, nobody meets in the middle. <laughs> There's one of these marker stones. And it says LNWR on it. Sounds like a railway company. And then what looks like a letter B on the top. There's remains of some sort of building there. Let's go back down here. We'll go to the towards the chimney and then we'll have a look at that the remains of that building. I would imagine these are all things related either to the canal tunnel or to the quarry. We'll have a look at that on the way back. It might be a building, it might be a sheep pen. This looks older those stones at the bottom, big chunky, proper northern building stones and then it's been topped with newer ones where they've probably made it taller to stop people climbing in probably because that's what people do. But look at these lovely stones, look at the difference in them. cool if there was some information on some of these. I guess you have to read up on it separately. I see something else in front which I'm going to go and have a look at. And I think this is the Marsden Moor War Memorial. I read about this. It's definitely a cross. So let's go and have a look. Wow, look at that view down there. Gosh, windy here. Wow, they did not make this very accessible. not have put it here rather than right on the precipice. <laughs> I 
wouldn't like to get blown off the top of here. Here we are. Seventh Battalion, second, seventh battalion in memory of the Duke of Wellington's regiment, 1939 to 1945, all who gave their all. And there is the remains of, I would imagine, last year's Remembrance Day poppy wreath. And I would imagine that will get replaced this year. So I'm not going to stand back any further because I will end up off the edge. This is the view they have and that's really something. back into the wind is not as fun. <laughs> right, let's go and have a look at the remains of that building and then we will follow whatever path we can. side it's really just a pile of rubble I'm not sure if this ever was really a building it might have been a shepherd's hut or let's say just a sheep pen you can't always find information about these things on on the internet, no matter how much you try. So there's a bit of whatever that is there. And then quite a rectangular remains of a building. It really. So let's hmm, no path here. I think we might have to go back again because there was a path further round. That sun now that it's out is really warm, which is nice. Where was the track that I found? Maybe this was it. Ah, oh, there it is. Right. We'll follow that then. That looks like an actual path. Oh, should have followed it there. 
Right, still heading in the right direction. Pull the hill is to the right, so I'm kind of doing the circular that I wanted to do. That's quite a good path to walk, look at that. And then people living down there. Brook down here. Little tiny brook. shocking balance so I'm always careful when I cross little <laughs> little streams and things it's very easy for me to fall in although I've only ever slipped in once and that was on that walk that I did going towards Croden but that was quite a lot of water Ooh, look at these fun guys on their way out by the looks of it. Lovely autumn colour, like the colour of pumpkins. So yeah, I'm sticking to this side of the fence and just following the track path that's been made and just going to follow that round. I like there's a can. <laughs> My first can of the day. I'm going to add a stone to it. Over the stream.
gorgeous greenery. I don't know what this is, but it's lovely and springy and deep. I'll find out what it is and put it up here for you. There's loads of it. It's gorgeous greenery amongst the grass. Right. particularly well walked bit of path for someone to put a marker stone in there but you can still see the path which means it is being walked so we'll stick to this as opposed to following the fence which is only just there anyway so I still have a a landmark to follow if I run out of path. So those cows. Blimey neck. I didn't want to meet cows. I had another oh no, sheep. <laughs> Because <laughs> they're on the horizon, they look enormous. <laughs> what an idiot. It's some sheep. I didn't think there were cows up here. They just looked vast on the horizon. <laughs> I'm less concerned about sheep than cows and horses. Like any animal, wild or domesticated, they deserve respect and keeping a safe distance, that's what I think. So, we won't upset the sheep. Now there's a bit of a hill there, like an edge. I'm just going to have a look on the map and see where I am. Make sure we're still heading in the right direction. Right, so Pull Hill is to my right, and I've done almost half the circuit by the looks of it. So I'm just going to stick with this track. Reservoir, which is one I haven't done yet. Just check the map and double check that. Look, there's all sorts of interesting hills and bumps. a wader of some sort. Can you see them? Heading somewhere. Battling against the wind. Hey sheep! not make eye contact. <laughs> oh, I feel so threatened by farm animals. I used to ride horses so I know that they have their limitations and I did get attacked by a horse in a field once which was not a fun experience. 
stay there. Mostly, thankfully, sheep are scared of people. They'd rather not get involved with us. Yeah, they're not interested, thankfully. I do watch a lot of those farming programs though, like this farming life and things like that, so. I know that they will push back if they feel threatened. There's another bunch of them looking at me there, look. All eyes watching me. There's sheep everywhere. So yeah, that's the Butterley Reservoir. Nestled in a very beautiful little valley there. Could be good for a walk, but definitely not today. Birds up ahead again. I'm looking through binoculars, but I can't quite see what those birds are because they're moving away from me in the wrong direction at great speed. They are waders of some sort, but I imagine with the damp ground up here, this is perfect for them to get in some extra food. And a lot of wading birds come to the UK for the winter. Oh shoot, where's the path gone? God, this path is getting more and more, oh look big old bit of path. Uh, okay, I'll stick to this for now. <laughs> yeah, a lot of wading birds come to the UK for the winter, for our milder winters. So they will gather at places like this where they can find food in the ground and reservoirs, and some of the reservoirs I've been to have been absolutely desolate wildlife, but some of them have been great. Not sure. Well, this is the only path I can see now, so I think I'll stick to it. It's going to go over there though. And am I going further away from where I need to be? There's little paths everywhere where... You can follow the route. So whilst I'm sticking to a path, at least I know I'm somewhere where people have made a regular route. Hear the birds, where are they? They're always just out of sight. Wow, look at that blue sky. Oh, big cloud of birds right above my head. I don't know what they are. They might be a shank of some description green or red, I always get them wrong. Very subtle differences and I always miss them. But maybe they are oyster catchers, they could be. Ooh, look. Slippery wood, but useful. handy. I don't feel like I'm going in the wrong direction. There's only so far you can go before you have to make a turn so I'm not worried at the moment. It's quite a 
confined area here because you're surrounded on all sides by roads or villages oh, farms so you know when you've gone the wrong way and this path looks well defined so I'm going to stick to this for now I'll stop again in a bit and have a look at the, uh, the map but based on that hill there I feel confident this is a nice walk actually I like the ones that are a challenge but sometimes it's nice to not do the challenges <laughs> I am not a thrill seeker I just like to get out in nature and enjoy it just gets me out of my head a little bit it certainly gets me out of the flat very noisy area, lots of traffic, lots of people, lots of noise from neighbours and surrounding things going on all the time. The only time when it really goes quiet is between about 3am, 2-3am and 6am, certainly midweek, goes quiet because the traffic almost completely stops but apart from that it's fairly relentless oh, there's the reservoir again gosh it's actually quite warm up here I'm so pleased I didn't bring my coat I'd have been bundling that onto the back of my rucksack now golf course I knew there was a golf course Marsden golf course I knew there was one here I feel like I've gone a little bit far over maybe it's not horrific look at that oh, look at those fantastic mill buildings down there you can see the buildings and the chimneys Proper northern town. Look at that. Oh, look, there's a big path running around there. That would have been easy, wouldn't it? But here, I can see where the path turns to the right. I'm going to have a quick look at the map and just see where I am. So, it looks like I'm on the last quarter of my circuit already. I've only done about two and a half miles. I haven't gone entirely around the outside, but I wasn't consciously looking for a particular path. I think there's a bigger path down there where that old wall is, but I'm going to stick to this one. So we'll keep following this. Oh, there's someone walking out on the top there. Yeah, there's a path down there. I don't know if that's just a path or a road. Whether there's any property access. But you can see it running down there those gorgeous moorlands again that lovely lovely brown colour
pond. Oh, but this is a vital resource in winter. Is starting to go off now. Those beautiful purple beds that we saw when I went up onto Black Hill. The colours were stunning. And it very quickly goes off. So I think that was back in September when I walked that. And now those colours have changed very fast in a month. That's a nice shot. the man that I saw. Let's drop the camera. Man walking his dog, doing what I'm doing, following tracks and hoping for the best. <laughs> Lucky do. I say this is quite a safe area really because you can't go far wrong. Look at all these lumps and bumps and things. I wonder if this is anything to do with the Bronze Age burials. I don't know whether that was actually up on the quarry site or whether that was further around. Um, I didn't look too closely at the archaeological information I was reading. But I will add some, I'll add some links and some other bits and pieces to the show notes and then you can read up on Pool Hill because it's interesting. This is a nice place for a relatively easy walk. It's not too hilly, it's very grassy, there's not too much water to get across and in fact you can, there's the road there, so as I said I was saying I was enclosed, there's road here right so there's a guy driving along there so that footpath is also, I would imagine, an access road either for properties or for the um, Canal Trust. Now I feel that I want to take the right path because I know if I keep going left I will eventually end up picking other walks up on the Marsden Moor and I don't want to do that because A it's taking me right off my route and B, I've done them before. Um, so when I parked up at Stanage earlier this year, I could see Pull Hill in the distance. Although at that point I hadn't been able to identify it because Google Maps wouldn't tell me. But yeah, blimey, it's getting warm now. Trouble to lose the scarf or the hat. Let's lose the scarf. This is why it's quite good to wear layers, but easily removable layers because I get hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. It's ridiculous. So I'll be constantly putting stuff on, taking stuff off. <laughs> now 
never seem to get it right. Oh look, you can park down there, I should imagine, and walk, walk the circular there as well. Just coming back up onto the brow of the hill. There's a man who's dog all the way up there. Now, I think that's where I'm going to end up at this rate. The end of it is a bit of a climb. Gosh, there's people everywhere along this area. My God, it's windy up here. <laughs> of what looks like quarry down there and that I would imagine is the A62 that I am parked on further round so as it curves around disappears behind the hill I'm somewhere down there and I think I have to go up there I'm just going to double check the map but I'm pretty sure that is where I'm going to have to be yeah, I'm almost back at the car. If I had just stayed low down and followed the track round, I'd be back at the car in no time. And I still have to do the hill, because I want to do the top. And then I can come down the other side to the car. So, I'm going to follow this track and get up on the top of the hill. And hopefully not get blown away. Somewhere up here, apparently, there is another one of those stands of stones. So, one of the walks that I did, probably back in August now, we found that stanza stone with that poem written on it, and apparently there's another one up here somewhere, but I'm not entirely sure where. Um, so if I see it, we'll have a look. lucky with the weather today. So sunny. Absolutely gorgeous. That looks really steep up there. Just gonna have to take a time. Magnificent. Pretty much there. Whew. Guess what I see ahead. I 
there was one up here. My poor brain has completely forgotten what they're called. Ah, this really is the top. Oh wow. There we are. Oh no, it's, is it? No, it's just a heritage trail marker. Mind either way. Oh wow. So that's another part of the quarry. This is used quarry building and you can see all the quarry stone left there. That I believe is Red Brook Reservoir. This view is insane. And then my car is just behind this hill, down there. So, bloody, it's windy up here. So, here's your view. You can't see some of it because it's around the other side. <laughs> I'm not going to walk all the way around there again. But you do have this really fantastic see all the reservoirs glinting in the sunlight and all the ponds it's amazing really stunning so I need to go I think down here I do not want to rock climb which I know is what people do I would like to see some of the quarry. So what I think I'm going to have to do is walk past the quarry, turn back on myself to the left, which will bring me back along where I first started this walk, and then get to it from there. I don't really want to climb this, I'm not a climber and I'm not stupid enough to think that I could get down any of this and you don't have to, there are other ways in I'm not that desperate for a selfie shot to get round I think because there you can see how high up we still are what we want to get and I can see you can see from here that curvy wall 
I think that's the stanza stone. So let's let's follow the track and see where it takes us. stop here for a little break. This looks like it might be a bit tucked away from the wind. view from up here is just fantastic. It's so, even with the traffic noise, it's so relaxing up here. It's the colours, look at those colours, they're just, just absolutely gorgeous. Right, so I'm now going to try and get down into there. And I know you can, because I've seen people doing videos from there. <coughs> I leave no trace. And let's 
see how we get on. It's chilly now, I, uh, when I sat down, that stone was cold. And when you're not moving around for a bit, your temperature quickly drops. So, back out onto the windy hill. So that's where I want to be, down there. So I would imagine if we follow this round, eventually, we will find some sort of access route. I can see a path there and a sheep. And I don't know if you can see. Oh, look, there's my car. Hello, car. And I can see. Look, you can see the tops of the chimneys now. And you can see. You might be able to see from here. There's steam coming out the top of one of them. That's really cool. Look at these cliff faces. Sheer faces and I'm being watched by a sheep. So here we are back on the original back on the original path. Oh that's windy. Oh gosh. Way that is slippery. This might be the way. Do we think? Oh yes, look at that. That is definitely a path. Let's follow this up then. down there that's a great view person walking up there right at the top which is where I've just come from actually slug huge rocks that's a view and we're almost there And there's the two sheep that I saw earlier, who will not be happy that I'm going to get in their way. They're <laughs> standing right on the path. Sorry sheep. Let's go and have a look at this bit and see if they move on their own. So there's bits of old wall. Lots of quarry stones. Oh, look, you can see where these are all the remains of the workings. walk all the way down there. There's walls there. The sheep are going to be really pissed about me in a minute. I don't think I can 
go around them, that's the only thing. So, there's all the remains. Come on sheep. Sorry guys, girls. So look at that. I guess this is the remains of the workings that used to take all the, the stone down from the quarry. Now, I'm going to have a standoff with sheep. Come on! Keep it! Keep it! And there's the workings there. I'll see if I can find some photos of what it used to look like when it was still happening. Because this is really interesting. Hard to give you a sense of how big this is. Sheep are my current seismometer. <laughs> oh wow, look at that. That's coming down. Eventually one day that's going to slide straight in there. Sorry sheep. Didn't mean to ruin your afternoon. Wow, look at these cliff overhangs. This is amazing. All right, sheep. Found themselves a nice little quiet corner here most of the time, I should imagine. I can't imagine a lot of people come up here at this time of year. So there's some big pointy bits. <laughs> Walls. I don't know what the are they walls or are they just because like here it looks like just stacks of almost like made bricks. I don't know. What do I know? Look at that. There are structures here. There probably would have been like shelter, foreman's offices, because they were probably up here in all weathers, quarrying here. Look at that. of human existence. So I don't know what was here. If you look on the top. A little metal. I don't know what it is. A pulley hole. Remains of a metal pole. I'm not sure. of what this actually looks like because it's I'm completely enclosed I love the colours and 
textures. I wonder if they ever get rock collapses here. Always signs of human life. This is the stanza stone. I'll put the text up on the screen. So that you can read this. It's called Snow. This is such a bizarre area. I don't know why, it just has a weird feeling about it. All these huge tumble down bits of manhandled stone, just like. Almost, you know, it's just been abandoned. I mean, it hasn't. They obviously knew that they were stopping work here. But it's like it just suddenly stopped. Really interesting, though. And then a milestone. Brooklyn, forty five and a quarter miles.
call this the Stands the Stones Poetry Trail. So this wall has obviously been built to go with that. It's very smart. Splendid seating. sat here. It's a little cold. It's a fantastic view of the, the overview for this area though. Then you've got the other bit of the quarry there. You've got the rest of it here. You've got the Stanage tunnel running all the way through there. fascinating place. I am now going to follow that path down there and head back to my little car. Their sheep. They <laughs> don't like being looked at. It's like, what do you want? It's funny how you've got look. You've got these big, big chunks of natural stone, and then a little bit of wall built in the middle. And then you've got that scooped out section there. And there's a funny little bit there. Making stuff though. Look at that. And there's that bit of wall again. There are little holes in the stones like they've had things in them, like metal poles or something. There's more of it here, look. All these. So you look up things online and you get a rough idea of them. And then you go and have a look at them. And then you get a different appreciation for it. And then you 
feel sometimes you need to go back and relook at something. So here is the walkway out of here. So let's go down here. Oh, you could roll down here. <laughs> Look at these piles of stone falling away down the hill. Landscape erosion on a massive scale. Oh, still windy. Obviously photos do not do any of this justice, but you can only do what you can. So it's quite a big quarry, you know. So this, ooh. <laughs> so this is me just walking back down to my car. See that quarry path behind me. And there's a sheep in front of me staring at me. <laughs> it's like, what you doing? That was a nice trip out. Oh, the sun's come back out. Oh, the warmth of that sun is lovely. All right, sheep. Not bothered about you. So here you can see that little building now. Get more of an idea for how it looks from up here. And I guess that would have been to do with offloading the quarry stone when it comes off there. Oh, I'm going to disturb the sheep, aren't I? They're not going to be impressed with me. Sheep are everywhere now. They've moved down from the hill, I think. They probably sense that the weather's not going to be as great this afternoon. Hey, sheep. They're all very pretty. Not after you. <laughs> Look. <laughs> They're like, go away, leave us alone. Stop harassing us, blooming tourists. <laughs> I know how they feel. Right. Last little bit. Even here, right down at the roadside, you can see the remnants of the quarry um, piles. I don't know whether they're called slag piles, I'm not sure. That's slate, but I don't know whether that's also regular quarry stone. Here's the style. And where is it? There's our car. That's it. My walk is over. It's been a good one. And now I'm going to get back into the car. 
<laughs> Hairs all over the place, look. That's what happens when you wear a hat. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, right, back at the car. What have I done today? 9,925 steps, apparently. 4.07 miles. It says 1 hour 58 minutes, but that's not right because I got here at half nine. So, yeah, stop starting three hours. So maybe it's about right. There's a lot of stopping and a lot of starting, a lot of taking of photographs and looking at landscapes. So I'm going to try and make a little bit of sense of the car. That is a very squeaky car. I have another snack to have before I go home. I brought a donut from my recent Morrison's yellow sticker haul. Because I can. It's only quarter to one. I always feel like if I come out and do a, a short hike, I'm not exhausted by the time I get back that I haven't done enough. But that was a guilt thing because you've got to do all these steps every day. And I don't have to worry about that now because I have a treadmill where I can top up. So even having to do that hike today, I still need to top up my steps later on. Although I've worked harder today because of all the, the ups and the downs and the hills and stuff. So I'll see how I feel. A couple of cyclists coming up the hill. Wow. And there are two more coming up. Man, that looks like hard work. The look of pain on their faces as they went past. Their legs are going to be burning when they get home. So that's it. That's another, that's another hike ticked off my list. I only had two left for the rest of this year. And that is one of them. The other one isn't really going to be a hike um, and I don't know when that's going to happen. It depends on the weather. Much more localised. It's going to be a three reservoirs walk. Uh, but I don't know when that's going to happen. I feel like this was probably my last like proper hike Just watching a bird of prey like a kestrel. It's hard to tell at that distance. It's hard to get the sizing right but it is hovering and it's ducking and it's hovering it's ducking and it's hovering. I was hoping it was going to be a harrier or something but I think it is a kestrel. That's it. So I hope you enjoyed this little hike.
shorter than usual, but very interesting. It's good to get back out on the hills. All right, catch you later.